There's a wife walking through the shot. She's oh, walking bye. around. She's. Hi, Mrs. She's go, She's leaving. Bye. Oh no! Don't go to oh. sleep. Whatever you need, no, don't her, go to sleep. Don't get that's our balcony back here. Dreams. Speaking of dreams, this week's episode is about a fantastic horror movie from 1984, uh, entitled "A Nightmare on Elm Street," starring Freddy Krueger. Krueger. <laughs> Steady Koochman. Uh, Steady like Steady Koochman. Um, Hello, my name is Frederick Krueger. <laughs> I'm the Krueginist. Krueger. So it's pronounced Krueger. Krueger. It's Krueger. Hi, Maddie. Kalen says hello. Hi. Headphones. I also say hello. Oh yeah, headphones. Steve doesn't say hello. <laughs> what? <laughs> He says hello. I'm just. Hello. I was just cranking and, and yanking. Steve, you gotta come over. I will. I will do that. This is a, this is a special part of the podcast where we make plans for a later date. <laughs> and none of you viewers are invited, nor am I. Yeah. Well, you're not invited, Kaylin, because you live in a different province, and other Man. reasons I won't get into this week. <laughs> I feel like I've to kick that horse enough. Uh, it's on you now, buddy. So I feel like that's going to be the next horror movie. Let's start. Uh, let's start with what we did last week and, and go around and talk about uh, like how this movie entered your life when you saw it for the first time. And just give me, just, just you guys, tell me about how, if this movie's influenced your life at all. And uh, let's start with Kalen this time. Bonjour. Um... So I saw this movie for the first time, I think, last year or the year before for Halloween. Again, like I didn't really watch horror movies growing up. And, uh, and, and the majority of the classics were essentially before my time, like the originals and then, you know, sequels and whatnot. But like the originals before my time. But I, 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 I checked them out for the first time about a year or two ago. I just did a whole – I just did the whole uh, – I keep calling it Freddy, but that's not the name of the movie. Uh, we know what you mean, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, so I just watched like all eight of them this past like week since the last, or well, I guess since Thursday or whatever, whenever we did the last pod. But uh, the it hits the ground running. Like there's no, it, it doesn't like ease you into it. It's just like bam. Um, so I do like that. They don't even show. Don't they don't even. I was just gonna say they don't even show the his or re, they just say his origin story in this movie. They don't show his origin story for like a couple movies, right? Yeah, yeah. that kind of blew my mind. We're just like thrown in the mix, it's like figure, yeah. It story, Kevin, go ahead. No, no, no they no, show him. Good. Yeah, they show him like making the glove at the beginning, but that's that's about it. Yeah, you're right. They uh, close to the end of the movie, they give his origin, like the the mother or whatever. Um, but yeah, like you just you hit the ground running. You're you're just in this you know universe or whatever. It's like eh, this is what it is. Figure it out. Um, it's got that '80s uh, texture. You know what I mean? Like you just like feel it. You just feel it. Um, I made notes throughout and whatnot. But as far as uh, yeah, like I I don't have a nostalgic value to this movie. Um, but and I wasn't scared to say the least. I was entertained though. Yeah, yeah, that's sort of the case for most of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. It's like Chucky; they're not they're not necessarily designed to be terrifying. They're designed more to be popcorn, like, like jump gruesome. scares and like goofy kills and you know creative kills. I guess is more accurate. Or some nonsense where he pulls his shirt up and slices his own nipple, that and was like dumb. maggots and green goo came yeah. out like that. Nasty so that was probably my favorite part of it, and it was gr- like gross. But, like, weird enough. Like, Wes Craven, I found, did a lot of, like, really weird stuff. We'll touch on that. I didn't mean to also cut you off, Steve. Sorry. Effects, like, you know what I mean? It's not CGI. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Movie. Yeah, they didn't have any CGI mm-hmm. yet. It was Perfect. all camera trickery. Um, I guess, for me, I saw this movie when I was in high school, I think. <clears throat> um, not. I wasn't a huge Freddy Krueger fan in general um, until... Later, um, I started to appreciate him as a character a little bit more. 
But in this movie, far less so than in the movies that come after it, he doesn't have that sort of forged character yet. It's just sort of like spooky burn man uh, growling, <laughs> growling at you. Um, <laughs> and it focuses much more on the main or the, the main group of teenagers, I guess. Um, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really have a huge nostalgic connection to this movie in particular. I do for Freddy Krueger. Um, I think that Freddy vs. Jason came out when I was in high school, which would have been like the only like one I saw it in theater. I saw it in theaters, yeah. And I was so down for it because like, I, I loved all the monster stuff when I was a little kid. Even though I hadn't seen any of the movies, I still just liked the idea of all these gross, creepy monsters like Jason and Freddy and Chucky and all of them. Um, this movie is it's it's entertaining, yeah, but it does have a lot of predictability and lull stuff, and, and it has that classic sort of problem with a lot of horror movies, is that all the parents are just so unwilling to listen to their children at all that it's like so frustrating to watch. And where drunk. It's like so, so, yeah, and drunk. There's so many moments in this movie where if the parents just like shut up and listen for a second, then uh, nothing nothing would have happened. They would have got the drugs that let you sleep without dreaming and it would have been fine. But uh, yeah, no, I, I don't dislike this movie, but it's definitely not my favorite of all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I think a lot of people would disagree with me, but I think that New Nightmare, which is I think the seventh movie, I want to say, and I yeah. think the first time that Wes Craven returns to direct, yeah. and I think he also wrote it, uh, and he's also a character in the movie playing himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that one I really like, and it is, you could watch this movie and then not watch any other movies up until that one, and you wouldn't miss anything in between, because it's, it's sort of like, takes the idea of Freddy Krueger and puts it into reality. So like, the producer of the movie, the director of the movie, the writer is... Um, a lot of the original actors come back to reprise not their roles, but play themselves in the movie as actors that are now being hunted by the idea of Freddy Krueger that's like come out of the movie, but it's also a demon or something, like an ancient demon that's just using the form of Freddy to like taunt people. So it's uh, it's fun. That, that's my favorite one. I like J Freddy vs. Jason a lot too, just because I like the like WWE style fighting that they <laughs> Lay down like at the other. near towards the end when they're fighting on a on a dock, they're definitely like pro wrestling fighting each other, and I I, yeah. I really liked that. Um, were you were you finished with your opening your opening rebuttal? That's not a thing. <laughs> My opening <laughs> statements. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, first time I saw it, I would have watched. It would have been during one of like the million Halloween marathons that they would play on whatever channel just like spike or whatever would play all the nightmare movies back to back all the thir friday the 13th movies back to back um that would have been the first time i saw it but uh again it, it wasn't until like later movies that i started to enjoy just the whole idea of freddy as a character and the nightmare on the elm street sort of universe yeah that's that's sort of what's uh what my whole shtick with most of these horror movies is I would catch bits and pieces over the years, but I couldn't wrap my head around horror until basically during the era of the walking dead and the walking dead desensitized me to the point that I could even enter this new, this realm and this right. realm, I couldn't even really fully explore until 2020, you know, like, during like it's during the pandemic now. yeah during the pandemic i watched a shit ton of movies and i've watched a bunch of horror as i've as i've talked about on this show and uh this this movie i've been wanting to see for a while because as a kid i had it in my head that it was like the world's scariest movie it was like you know it was gonna haunt your nightmares in real life and out of these four movies like i've seen i've now seen chucky um and i've seen uh, I've seen Friday the 13th and I, I think Halloween is one that might surprise me as well but this one I think is going to be ultimately the one with the most gore and attempted scares because it's so like trying. it's a Wes Craven trying to be a, 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 a an event theater movie in the 80s that, pe that teens were going to see and get freaked out by and it's one weird situation after another 
where even like Chucky was basically like almost an action movie in its its structure, and and Friday the Thirteenth like nothing really happens in the first movie. It's just kind of bizarre, and it's kind of like this dude stalking the different kids, and there's no real creative kills like the later Friday the Thirteenth movies. And and the Kalen's right, like this this movie really hits the ground running, and I really enjoy like I really had a good time not knowing what was going to happen next from right from the beginning where I've seen that opening bit spoofed a hundred times, okay. you know, Rick and Morty weird Al's done his own take on it. Why? Um, quick question. Why was, why were they, why'd they frame it so small or whatever? Like why wasn't it the full screen or whatever? I don't know. Maybe just, it's a dream. It's an inception situation. Maybe it was just clever okay. filmmaking. I don't know. If you think about it, if you were in theaters, it was like, you know, it just kind of got small. It was, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, growing up, it just scared the shitter to me. And I'm, I'm honestly surprised that this one help, holds up to what I imagined it to be as a kid. It probably would have fucked me up if I saw it in, you know, when I was in 1990, when I was five or six, when I started actually seeing movies like just compared to the first ninja turtles <laughs> or the second <laughs> ninja turtles movies which were my best my favorite shit when i was a kid that was that that's what it. we'll have to do that that's what have messed me up oh yeah we well, definitely have to do the ninja, ninja turtles fucking month so um yeah i guess we could just kind of uh just kind of talk freely now that we've uh sort of opened up with our history i wanted to bring up the fact that um there was a thing that happened in a lot of movies and still happens, but you don't see it as much now. But back in the 70s and 80s, you saw the little introducing. Yeah, yeah. And then in a big name. And this movie very famously introduces Johnny Depp. And Mr. Johnny Depp's... Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp's death in this movie is one of the... What did you say is? His death? What? What did you say? Uh, yeah, his, his death. Johnny Depp's death in this movie... Oh, yeah. It's one of the most grotesque deaths I've ever seen with a really interesting special effect. Now, he gets, he can't stop falling asleep to help his girlfriend out. <laughs> he can't fucking stay awake. She keeps, she's just, let's stay awake. And he's like, yeah, sure, babe. He's, he's just, a sleepy teen. he's a sleepy he's teen. Just, yeah, he's just very typical, like off camera. He's got a storyline where he's constantly smoking weed or something. He's like that jock that smokes weed. And uh, he passes out, and he gets sucked into the bed. It's a very famous scene. You see it in, like, horror movie, like, recap montages all the time. And he just gets spurred out as just red liquid, as just blood. And the effect is, obviously, they took a set of a kid's, you know, bedroom, yeah, and flipped it, and it just comes out. And then the cops go in and they keep talking about like oh do we need an ambulance and the guy's like we need a mop and a bucket and then later <laughs> the cop's like he's still in the bathroom puking from the first time he walked in the room like I just yeah. that affected they me. know what you the know, cause of death is it's like, it's like he I don't exploded know. upwards <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> know <laughs> um, yeah the interesting thing is they I think that in this movie they created a, a rotating set for the part at the beginning of the movie when uh, I forget the character's Tina. name, but the, the, Tina. The, the, the Tina, the first death. Um, Yo, when, quick question: Why was the camera so zoomed on her face, or like what lens were they using, or something? It almost made her like fish-eyed, or whatever. Like her opening shot. Uh, they when probably used a fish-eye lens. Uh, it, it's more, fish eye. Yeah, it's it's more. Uh, it's odd to look at. So because they're in a dream world, they probably wanted to give you a sensation of something that's not natural to your eye in terms of like the filmmaking itself. Yeah. In the later movies in the, the Freddy uh, series, they, they really do a lot to visually indicate that stuff is not right immediately in terms of like lighting, right. depth of field, things that are out of focus or in focus, even just like, coloring of things mm -hmm. um, just so that you as an audience are not, you're not like immediately thrust into like, oh, this is a dream, but there, there's stuff that's unnatural about the shots that they're using that are little visual clues to you. Like the whole uh, ending sequence is very, we'll get to the ending, but like it's, yeah. you, it, it, I knew, I was like, this isn't, this, there's no way the ending is this happy and then yeah. the fucking twist. 
Um, yeah. The other thing, just before you go on, Steve, I wanted to note on that the arms hit Freddy Krueger, fall, ch- like stalking her down the alleyway, and then his her arms going, his arms going all fucking weird and long for like a second. There's a lot Freddy of that kind of yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of those kind of like really weird things like that, and I think it's the movie. The whole series is probably like this, and I this is like Chucky too. Um, is, I'm gonna go and probably watch all of them, and they just keep getting crazier and crazier. But I do want to go see. I want to rewatch this movie specifically <clears throat> to see if there's this kind of stuff happening in the background. Sorry, go what? ahead. Like yeah, it's like effects? yeah. Well, no, they, like the little like the little. Use, hints. I think they start using um, CGI stuff, like computer stuff in the sixth movie. I think that that's the one where they start using it. Um, that one, I think, was like a 3D. They, they were doing like 3D in it and stuff, which was still like really shaky at the time. Um, the but yeah, 3D it, it's movies all, still suck. Even in yeah. the movies after that, which I think are only... The Robert England, England ones are uh, the seventh one, the, the New Nightmare, and then Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy vs. Jason has so many practical effects. It's almost completely practical practical effects they did i remember the director, that yeah, yeah. the director wanted to stay as far away from cgi as that he could I love um, it. which is in, especially in horror it's always better because things even if it's like a fake head the fact that it's tactile and real and unearthly it, it almost makes it feel more uncanny and in a good way as opposed mm-hmm. to like the uncanniness of a cgi face that's like oh that's not real it's like a floaty cartoon ghost um anyway what i was saying back i mean this is still sort of on point with practical effects the uh they built the rotating room for the first kill so that she could crawl up the wall and have it look like somebody was you know dragging her around on the ceiling uh and that was a rotating set so that she could slide up and then move across and i believe they used the same rotating room for the blood they're like yeah we'll just use this room again but it would probably would have been smarter if it was just a locked down room with the stuff going up or if they just put the camera upside down because what ended up happening is the a bunch of people got electrocuted one oh my god and uh the uh room started to rotate because the blood was all pooling at one side so that you know when you start to see the blood like drifting yeah, off to one same. side yeah. that was not meant to happen that was actually an accident and it was because it was pooling and the whole room started to, to rotate it ended up looking really cool it and looks it just, really yeah. cool yeah so it worked out but yeah, it wasn't supposed to happen, apparently. Rotating sets. Cool. Always cool. It's never not cool when they have a rotating set in anything. It's like, pretty, like, you know, I would be hard-pressed to find, like, there's SNL performances that are enhanced by a rotating. Billie Eilish very recently did one like that for, I think she's very literally bad guy, and it's fucking cool. And they're just, it's its locked in, like, the shot's like this, right? So all you see is the room spinning, and then you get to see a shot, a wide shot, as they went to commercial, right, of the of the rig. And I believe they use it in some famous musical, like Singing in the Rain or something. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a new, it's not a new invention okay. to this movie. It's, it's like, space, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey did it. Um, oh, man, we gotta do that movie. You may regret that statement <laughs> <laughs> Steve no, will movie, the like, whole time. movie is Ever. rough to watch uh if you're not in the right mind space <laughs> let's just say that there well, is 20 luckily, minutes of a guy staring at the screen with flashing lights going at the end of the movie and i'm not exaggerating 20 minutes yeah uh, luckily luckily i've smoked weed a couple of times in my life and uh hi Haley. hi Haley. <laughs> hello Haley. <laughs> welcome to the show uh, welcome to the welcome to the pod show Hey, did you uh, see this one, Haley? Hey, hey, you see this one? <laughs> did you guys have a favorite kill? Or a favorite shot? Um, I mean, I think that the blood going up was probably the coolest thing. I do I do like a lot of the, the weird stuff at the end. Um, like when she's going yeah. up the stairs and like her feet are melting into the carpets. I mean, you can really... <laughs> one of the things that's kind of weak about this movie is that you can really tell how they achieved almost all the effects. Like it's it's not trickery to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, they did that to do that. 
And it, that's not yeah. even me being like, I'm familiar with effects. It's more just like, no, I can tell that there are holes in the stairs filled with toothpaste or whatever. The fuck. <laughs> well, they, they used the same holes in the stairs it looked like to do the little fire effect for yeah. after <laughs> Freddy Krueger was walking around the, the house on fire, which was an interesting effect too because it's clearly like it clearly goes from freddy to a guy in a freddy suit with like a fake ass mask yeah. who's just on fire and they can only show him for like a second because there's a dude on fire but they get a lot of mileage out of that just like that ending scene in chucky where he's walking down the hallway they get a lot of mileage out of this on fire freddy bit and all of it was cool the i really like the fire fire footprints on the ground and I really like the the stuck foot footprints because it reminds me of act like some of the stuff in these dream sequences reminded me of real dreams where you know you can't run even when Tina's running away at the beginning and she's yeah, running yeah. all like she's running all like ah! Almost and it's real spot. yeah it's really like horror movie but it's also like just fucking dream run logic, away yeah. but it's it's dream logic yeah there's a lot yeah, of that cool stuff there's, I think that like it, it's it's clear to me that they were trying to do a thing where it looks like she's running really fast, but the background is moving really slowly. So she's supposed to be doing yeah. a thing where you're trying to run, but you can't run in a dream. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it 100% read the way that it was intended to. I feel like there are people <laughs> that would watch that and be like, why is she running so slow? <laughs> run faster. And it's like, yeah. it's a dream, man. You can't run in your dreams. You yeah. try to throw absolute... a punch in your dream and it just doesn't work. And you're like, oh, my arms. My absolute favorite thing in the whole movie is when she basically home alone Freddy. She yeah. basically sets she gets the house all set up and then she's like, Hey, dad, and why can't his dad the dad just fucking cross the street and investigate? Like that whole thing was weird where she kept yelling out of the locked house, like, Come over here that's and calls again, him, like, Come yeah. to help me and that's like plays into the whole like is this is it all a dream? Like are we Everything all? Is it a all a dream? <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll um, come back to that question later. But she she fills a light bulb with fucking with shotgun uh, shells. Uh, you know. Now that I think about it, that was like too many shotgun shells. Where'd you get all that fucking ammo? And then she sets up. Oh yes, that's right. But and she sets up this there. elaborate. He doesn't live there. Though. That's the yeah. thing, right? His her parents are very are extremely separated. But she sets up that hilarious uh, sledgehammer. Uh, that sledgehammer uh, bit that smokes Freddy right in the chest, which was yeah, great. That was a good one. The one thing that, like, I found, I think, unintentionally comical, but it's because I, like, made a note of it, is she's like, I'm going to wake up in 20 minutes, and you have to come back and check on me in 20 minutes and break the door down. And then she does all of the Home Alone preparations <laughs> between <laughs> that and her waking up. I'm like, Do you know what's funny about that? Uh, the version that I have, I'm glad that you brought that up. The version of this movie I, I actually rented from Amazon Prime Video. You guys owe me two fifty each. I what? just kidding. I'm just joking. I so bought it. <laughs> I uh, I checked. Well, as soon as she was like, in 20 minutes, knock this door down. It, it didn't go that way. It, about 10 minutes later in the movie is actually like the end of the movie, like the ending bit. But there were 20 minutes, 20 minutes and 10 seconds left in the in the movie. Oh, I see. So the end of the so, movie was 20 minutes. Okay. So I don't know if that was intentional. If Wes Craven was trying Maybe. to be like, we're going to do a thing here. But the, the whole sequence and, and, you know, them wrapping it up happens about, you know, 12 to eight, 12 or 17 minutes later. Right. So I don't know if that was intentional or not. You know, it probably was because it, it doesn't make any sense logically because they could have just had her say an hour you know, yeah. she, she could have said any amount of time that would have made more sense for her to have a conversation with her drunk mom, start yeah. filling light bulbs with shotgun powder, uh, <laughs> gunpowder, and like successfully rig up a sledgehammer to. <laughs> was was that a meta dream reference slash joke? Maybe. What? Maybe that was different. Well, time's different. That, it's yeah, like yeah, you're gonna yeah. check to see how much time is left in the movie. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be able to do that in a movie theater in 1984. That's but. true. <laughs> or but, even uh, in 1984 if you had it at home, because it's, you know, you can't see how much time is left on a VHS either. I mean, you could look at a clock and then look at the <laughs> clock again after. Uh, that's how they used to do it. I will not. Day. I refuse. I will I not. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it is heavily implied at the end of the movie that that entire ending sequence from her going to sleep and waking up 
that she didn't actually wake up and she was still dreaming, right? Because her mom disappears into the bed, the car pulls up, Freddie is the car, <laughs> and then mom turns, <laughs> mom turns into an inflatable sex doll and gets sucked through the window. <laughs> yeah. That weird, that scene was really, really fucking weird. Like, she, like, bounced and was clearly out of sex, but, like, like a, a, a air-filled mannequin of some sort. Yeah, she was a it's rubber not lady. The, it's not the ending Wes Craven wanted. No, it was supposed to end after Freddy uh, disappeared. Na- uh, was it Nancy? Yeah, Nancy was supposed to be triumphant. It was supposed to be, like, all good or whatever. In the end, she killed him. But the studio's like, no, we got to make it so there's, like, you know, sequel possibilities. I can only imagine how the next movie starts, though. Don't spoil it for me, because I They're really want to see. They're all kind of independent of each other. Yeah, not that's... really linear. Yeah, a lot of them but... take play, take different characters. It's it's just like the the Freddy movies don't act the same way as the Chucky movies do, for example. Whereas the Chucky movies have recurring characters for a little while, and then Chucky kind of goes off and does his own sort of adventures, <laughs> the adventures of Chucky. Um, the Jason movies have a similar thing where Tommy Jarvis is a recurring character after a little while. Um, yeah, it's this one is just like Freddy loves loves killing, loves yeah. killing people in their dreams, or, or, or loves killing teenagers in their dreams with a kids. with a bit of a sex sexual undertone, but also a bit of a Bugs Bunny undertone. He likes to be real creative with his kills. The 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 two most iconic scenes in this movie that I've seen a hundred times are the one I mentioned with Johnny Depp where he gets yeah. sucked into the bed and just spurted it out with water. And the other one is where Nancy's in the tub and the claw comes out. That's and then my, they do a really they do a really creative thing where she she gets sucked down into like a dark dra- like a dark watery pit. Yes. And I really thought I really felt the suspense with that because she's in the midst of trying not to fall asleep. And why would you get into a nice, comfortable, <laughs> warm tub if you're trying to stay awake? Doesn't make sense. Stressed, man. She was stressed out. She needs she's taking relief. those she's just taking those fucking stay awake Water pills night. the whole time that don't even work by the yeah. time the end of the movie rolls around. That um, was one of my favorite shots though, like the hand coming up, like it's just very symmetrical it like it focuses your like her legs kind of like focus towards it kind of thing and then when you hear the mom and it, it kind of like slinks back in but it's so yeah. smooth like it's not it, di- it didn't feel like an awkward kind of motion or whatever it was just like very yeah it's also really cool um visually when she's trying to get out of the tub and you know from the other previous shot that there's like this void beneath her yeah um and i think i'm not sure if she was just like miming that like she just had her body down or if they literally built like an oversized tub for her to to sink down into but i think that what they achieved there visually was it, it sold it for me i was like wow this is good, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty they good. probably had to build that on top of a they probably did build a a it bathroom too... set on top of a pool so i yeah. watched it with the commentary or yeah commentary and yeah they had it was like a raised level for that for the bathroom and it was a tub with like a portion of a cutout and like a big like water tank underneath. So she could just so that, dip down into it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So is the water tank that they shot the scenes of her struggling the the, the actual tank that she was being pulled into, or was that a separate? Uh, pretty sure that was separate. Yeah. Okay. Because that was pretty horrifying. I uh, I almost drowned a few years ago, and the feeling, the hopelessness. Of a, of the sensation of like this could be it drowning is unparalleled to anything I've ever experienced. Not sorry to bring it down. I did survive. My uh, wife saved my life. Um, I don't give her enough credit for that. I was thinking about that the other night. How she literally saved my life. Um, but I that's that scene was one of the scenes that really got me to go. Ugh. Yeah. Also, for some reason, like gore doesn't affect me at, at all. And the the practical effects in this movie are, are mostly very obvious, but that opening kill when Tina and Rod have just finished up doing it, and then her chest just explodes with, like, like cuts, yeah. and then the blood is spurting everywhere, even though it looked comical and kind of fake, it still made me, like, grimace, you know? Like, yeah, it still it was, made me really, like, ooh. It's definitely a good uh, way to open up horror series like a franchise basically like it was it's very effective and 
it's interesting to a point to have one person witness it and then everybody else walk into just a room absolutely spattered with gore <laughs> and yeah. being like what happened well rod's story go. arc in this because rod's story arc in this kind of happens in a way that nobody knows that the killing is happening from a fucking nightmare monster yeah. so from the police point of view he's brutally murdered this woman with a knife and then goes to jail and hangs himself so he's definitely guilty you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. even and nancy just comes off as crazy the whole time because she's she's in there like going to see rod in Terrible. prison and then and then the dude kills like does he didn't kill himself obviously it was freddie hangs him but she just you know she goes to do that sleep study a sleep the sleep study part i you know that was super fake to me because i've taken sleep studies and they hook about 50 wires to your face um but maybe i'm you got the new you got the new revamped sleep study also hearing other people fuck is worse than any nightmare i've ever had just i to, hate it you know tip my hat off to johnny depp having to sit through that i hate it and if the theory is that this whole movie took place in a dream, then he was in a dream having, he was in somebody else's dream trying to. <laughs> so I don't think that the, yeah, I don't think that the whole movie was supposed to be a dream. I just think to that end part after Johnny Depp gets killed, I think that part, she never wakes up. Like when she pulls him into the real world, I think it's alludes to that. She's potentially still in the dream world. But again, later renditions of the movie, people are constantly ripping Freddy into the real world. So they, mm. I think they took the end of this movie to be like, this is what it is. And the ending now doesn't make sense. But now we're just going to like make that a rule in the world. of Freddy is if you hold on to him and wake up, you can pull him in like, right up till what Freddy they needed. But they brought the hat in. <laughs> yeah. 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 What they yeah, needed no, no, to I... do is have a, have a, a top, like a spinning top. And as Freddy's car drives away, they needed to zoom in on a top that never and stops it spinning. A bit, and like, it just <laughs> wobbles a bit, but never stops spinning. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that is, of course, the ending to Inception, which is another kind of stupid, like, How they were in a dream the whole time. You know what they needed it's in Inception a... was a burned man in a striped sweater <laughs> and a hat and a knife for the, fingers. That would be Inception hat. himself the whole time. With a flopsy hat and a fucking knife hand. Yeah, well, I mean, Christopher Nolan is sort of, like, renowned for his, you know, his ability as a filmmaker, but he's also famous for admitting in interviews that he's like, no, this is just my version of this. So, like, The Dark Knight is, like, his version of Heat. And, like, Inception is just his version of Nightmare on Elm Street. Clearly. Yeah. Can you please explain what Tenet is? Because Tenet just, I hated uh, that movie. Oh my That's god, his, how many uh, times have you watched it? Only one? Tenet is his version of Back to the Future. <laughs> except, he, except he's watching it no. backwards. Yeah. Tenet is actually dope. Tenet is amazing. I, I couldn't. I tried very hard. I didn't see it. I didn't watch it a, no, a second time. You have to. Because I, okay. Fine. I, mean, I don't know. I watched it once and I, I think it was fine. I, I, I think it's yeah, it's fine. It's a little long. No, it's even better Very with long. more viewings. It's even better. I, Maybe. I, I mean, if you didn't the watch the whole movie it. and be like, well, that one of those two masked guys is definitely going to be him, 100%. Like, the, if one guy's moving backwards, I'm like, it's going to be a thing where the two movies meet at some point, right? Like, that's going to be the whole idea. And so I was right. But at the same time, I was like, Still cool. Like, I don't think it's dumb. I just think it's oh, like, whatever. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was cool as shit. I watched The Matrix Reloaded the other night, and he definitely w w drew inspiration from the Matrix fucking freeway scene in that backwards car bit. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw a lot of, like, a lot of parallels there. Yeah. Um, yeah when that don't guy get me wrong. Glasses jumped on the hood of the car. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Tenet. The movie, the movie it does look, it's visually stunning, and Robert Pattinson, if you thought that he was going to be a bad Batman, that movie alone will make you, like, believe that he can be a smarmy playboy slash action guy. Uh, action good Time guy. Good time is the best example of, of Robert Pattinson being a great actor, um, but I digress. <laughs> We're talking about A Nightmare on Elm Street starring Freggy Trudgen. Here's an interesting fact. Uh, Johnny Depp got the part because of Wes Craven's daughter. She's like, oh. ooh, pick that one. 
Why? Because he was a, a beautiful boy. I guess he so. was. Yeah, he was wearing a half shirt. Why was he navel yeah. exposed? Crop tops were jocks. The jocks just wore crop tops in the eighties and early nineties yeah. for some reason. Yeah, they used to call them jock tops. Yeah. <laughs> or croc would, jocks. The crop tops. I, it was if, so. It was if seventies and eighties. It was it was jocks that wore crop tops, and then the jocks shirts went down. But the heavy metal star shirts, the glam rocker shirts, went up, and they started to wear the crop tops. <laughs> yeah. So. And now no that's... one wears them. <laughs> no. Nope. Jason, who are well, you wearing tonight? Who's on your shirt? Who's Carrie? I got Kenny. Kenny Omega. Oh, nice. He's a, he's the best wrestler in the world. Best. You he's, heard it here he, first, folks. He's no, like legitimately. He's like top, probably top three, top three wrestle boys. Is he Canadian? He is actually. Nice. He's from uh, he's from Winnipeg. Ah, oh, Winnipeg. No, that's yeah. Okay, yeah. Chris Jericho is also from Winnipeg. I don't know if you guys know who Chris Jericho is, but name kind of sounds familiar. Was that See, movie that's... about him? Nope. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> the wrestler. Yeah. Okay, so the funny, the funny thing about the wrestler is that Chris Jericho's career has almost turned into the movie The Wrestler, and he kind of has started to look like Randy the Ram. Anyway, yeah. it's I'm it's down. funny to me. I Just like old was... grizzled vet. I'm an old grizzled vet. I'm Johnny. I'm Recky the Ram or whatever. Fuck. That's a movie. That's a movie I'd like to talk about on this podcast because of my wrestling fandom. You can make it happen. Sure. It's kind of like a horror happen. movie in its own way. What? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that you guys are horrified that you have to sit through a movie about professional wrestling? No, I like The Wrestler. It's a good movie. It's like a David Ayer movie, though, isn't it? Yeah. So Something it's it's like it's a, it's a film. <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> Would you guys uh, consider A Nightmare on Elm Street a movie or a film? <laughs> mm. uh, I mean, it was shot on film. It's a movie for sure. Yeah. Do they ever say? Do they ever mention the street name? I don't. I don't like. There's no movie, 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 movie title shout out once, but I don't even think they mentioned Elm Street once. No, and I think the closest to the title is they say it's a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're having a nightmare, and this is our street, Elm Street. <laughs> no, I, th I think the night the Elm Street bit. Here, do you know what's weird about this movie to me? Also. There's that shot when they go to Rod's funeral, <clears throat> and they're clearly in California, but that, like, neighborhood they're in for most of the movie just looks like a suburban mid Midwestern neighborhood. In my whole life, I thought this took place in, like, you know, like, Middle Ohio. America. Yeah. yeah and it's it's because right. I think that a lot of movies try to set themselves in, like, sleepy towns or smaller suburban areas because there's more of a sense of isolation. Yeah. And um, even when you're on a street that is crowded with houses at night, you've, if you've ever lived in suburbia before, it's like a ghost town after like 9 p.m. There's just nobody That's outside, true, yeah. really, right? And uh, I think there's something more uneasy about that, which is like all of these movies are filmed in California just because that's where all movies are filmed at this time period because it was the cheapest way to make a movie. Yeah. Um, you know, if you can get away with filming on a specific strip of road, um, you know, north of Hollywood, you're going to do it. But unfortunately, finding a graveyard where you can't see palm trees in the background is a little <laughs> bit more difficult. Um, nowadays, when they do that, they'll just like paint out the trees, right? You couldn't do that back then. I believe even well, in uh, Halloween, which we'll get to when we start talking about it, but that's also filmed in Hollywood and... If you look in the background, way, way in the background, you'll see palm trees po poking up, but the movie is meant to be set in the Midwest and to the point that they even have like garbage bags of leaves and they'll throw them around just to have le like orange and brown leaves <laughs> around. But it's always like, you can tell there's just like not enough leaves. <laughs> like this, this, this looks like someone just strategically put these leaves down. To your point, I I am watching. I'm listening to uh, the Office Ladies podcast, and they talk there. It's the uh, it's Jenna Fisher and uh, Angela, Kim, Kim, whatever Angela from the Office, talking about they they do an episode recap, and a lot of the times they talk about how they filmed it all in L.A., but Scranton, Pennsylvania, is like 
mostly it's mostly winter there you know it's yeah. you when it's in it and because the show takes place it was a fall winter show like most sitcoms are a lot of the oh the shots of the exterior of the of the office building were winter because they they went and actually filmed them there um <clears throat> but also they filmed the, that office is actually in la so when it was winter they had to like dress it up to look like winter and they had to make certain acting choices to like make it more believable that that if they were outside they had to like pretend to be shivering and stuff and uh and there are they had to paint out palm trees a lot of times when they were going to other places in scranton when it's actually just driving down the street in somewhere in la they just you know on like a, a studio a lot yeah so i i think the to that to be said is like i don't know where this is meant to be set but it's difficult for you to not just think that it's in la somewhere because there's a whole scene of a graveyard with palm trees everywhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, it doesn't take away from the movie, no. but I did have the, I had the same moment as you guys where I was like, weird. They're in LA definitively. It's, you can see the smog. You yeah, can see the fucking Hollywood the Hills. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I was, I, go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead, Kalen. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The uh, when uh, when Nancy does the whole Home Alone setup, and um, and then he he gets he he falls off the over the railing of the stairwell or whatever, like down to the stairs, and you can see like a mattress for him to land on. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that happens a couple times. I think when she uh, when she, when she falls from the roof or something. when she falls from like the sky. Uh, in front of the house, you can see like the the air not the air mattress, but the mat, the big mat that she lands on. Yeah, for the bush. There's a, there's a few things here and there that you're like, oh, I'm not as tight as I remember when I was a terrified child. <laughs> well, even Freddie's like get up. His like clothes are too big or something, and his hat's yeah. all weird and floppy. His pants are way too big, and his yeah, like it just, does. He, he looks weird when he's yeah. like when he's like running down the hallway. That wasn't like, him. Don't, just wait. Which one? I believe it. I yeah, I believe you. It didn't look right. Like that first scene, so first he has the stretched out, stretched out long arms or whatever, right? And then there's a shot of him doing this weird little, like, shuffle thing. That's not him. No, it's not him because the camera turns and then he's right there. So yeah. it's like he was standing over there and that was just a double, yeah. It's oh, I see. not the right size double. Yeah, he's I just... got, it's like actually just like the craft service lady. Just <laughs> really, like a weird hat, it's a little wobbling, it's too big. Well, throughout this movie, I feel like they're they're trying to nail down the look of Freddy Krueger. Like, I feel like they don't like they started this movie with a vision, and through the making of the movie, they ended up with the F Freddy Krueger we know now. Yeah, uh, and it kind of it, that kind of plays into it. That weird bit. He like there's a the part where he cuts off his own fingers, and the That's mask, hilarious. his face mask doesn't look right. Yeah. And, and, it's, and by it's, the, yeah, the, the makeup isn't isn't one hundred percent there yet, and also like his eyes just look too much like Robert England's eyes. Yeah, yeah. He wears like contacts and stuff throughout the movies as, as they go. Um, I, 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 my favorite one is New Nightmare because he's not all burnt. He looks almost like he's wearing Freddy's face over like a a muscle tissue underneath it. It's really cool looking. I don't know. A lot of people hate it, but it's my favorite one. Uh, he looks. I like. It's more frightening. I liked when he pulled his own face off. That practical <laughs> effect was really cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And he's such a joker about it. He's not like, Ugh. he's like, take this out. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> he is one of the more funnier um, horror movie killers for sure. Grimoire. What, what's, what's the name of this? Uh, what's the name of our Oh, right sorry. Now? I forgot to introduce this. This is the second episode of the Halloween Grimoire of Familiar Killers. There it is. I practiced yeah. it all day for 14 hours straight. <laughs> I said it 3,000 times, <laughs> and I still and almost you, messed yeah, it up. Yeah, and you almost got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, familiar thriller of holiday killers. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, no, uh, I think that for the most part, the effects in this movie hold up there's a few, you know, when he's on fire, it's it's pretty obvious that it's a guy in a burn suit. But like, 
you know, forgivable, whatever. You get to see a guy on fire trying to go up a set of stairs and then fall down them and then get up and try and go up them again. And you're like, how long has this guy been on fire? <laughs> Even when, he, yeah, when he leaves the basement, I was like, this guy's been on fire for like 30 straight seconds. Like, th- what the fuck? I really enjoyed the on fire bit because, like we were talking, like I said earlier in this in this show, like they really get a lot of mileage out of this fucking on fire. Like a, it's like a final boss version of Freddy Krueger, where he's he's still fucking it up. He's on fire as shit. He's in the real world, as far as we know. Oh, I don't know what really happened. Like, is it implied? that he his whole sole purpose is he's going after Nancy to get to the mom who seems to be the ringleader for getting all the parents together to kill him originally. And were the movies supposed to originally be like each movie is like he's he's ticking off parents? Because obviously the way you guys describe it, it takes an immediate detour. But you know, she gets pulled like wall and then he kind of lays off. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And it's yeah. it felt like this was going to be a series of movies about Freddy Krueger exacting revenge against parents through their kids because he's a kid killer, which is very, it's stated early in the movie. He was like a kid killer and they, the cops wouldn't do anything about it. So the, the, the parents get to band together and burn him alive. And that's why he's got the fucking burnt face. That's why he <clears throat> goes after kids. Did you guys have to turn the volume up really loud on your guys' copies when the mom was, explaining the story no No. (laughs) for some reason like my thing well actually i guess it's got two audio settings on it got mono and then surround i had i was it was playing on mono and i had my tv up to 100 and i still had to go like i sat by it and it still wasn't working so i put on the uh the subtitles just for that that little scene when she's uh telling nancy about what happened because i couldn't for the life of me hear her for the like i could not hear her that Weird. means that the that scene was only in stereo, and the mono tr- the mono channel yeah. was only playing a very small fraction of the sound. If you had a proper mono, like if the mov- the TV was set to mono, it would have played out of the right speaker, probably, ah, okay. or something of something like that. Or in stereo, if you're listening to it in stereo headphones, it would probably only come through one side, right, or something like that. Um, I don't know. So if that's your... inaccurate, comment down below. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, did you say you bought it? Oh, I bought it on my Xbox. Oh. Um, Why yeah. buy virtual or digital or whatever? Because it's easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but... I, I couldn't find it to stream for free, so I bought it. I paid five bucks to rent it, and I felt like a real, you know, was, that kind of It was played... very cheap, yeah. I think mine was like $4 or something. Yeah, mine was four ninety nine and it was a rental, so I only have it for like two days. But I, I, don't I care. have a physical copy of it somewhere, but I a lot of my DVDs are like packed away right now. I just don't have space to to have them all out. Yeah, um, I don't have a DVD collection either, so it wouldn't make any sense to just own a, a single copy of <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, <laughs> that's my whole that my whole collection is that uh, is Advent Children on Blu Ray and a single copy of. <laughs> Single copy of a Nightmare, Nightmare on, Elm Street. on Elm Street. For a um, podcast I did. Yeah. So anyway, to uh, answer your question, it's not a series where he's going after the parents one by one. That would actually be kind of interesting, but that's not, that would be, yeah. that's not what it is. It's just like, generally, they'll introduce a new protagonist. Either they're moving into the neighborhood or, you know, yeah. it's a right. character that you haven't met in a previous one. And then you focus on that character and slowly it, almost every movie it's them having to discover who Freddy Krueger is even though like we know who he is hear about the, the story, the myth, the legend yeah. even in Nightmare on Elm Street versus Friday the 13th they still have to do the, <laughs> the we gotta figure out who Freddy is that one they have an actual proper like um, it's like a flashback to before Freddy was dead yeah. and he's like he has like a photo album of all the children that he's murdered or whatever and the parents, like, so he's in, like, a hut, though. It's, it's not a boiler room. Well, like, that movie, movie that movie is, like, a Friday the 13th movie is happening and a Freddy movie is happening, and they kind of converge overlap, because yeah. Freddy goes into Jason's dreams and is horrified by what he finds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the concept for that movie is Freddy, is, he brings Jason back to life in yeah. order to 
frighten people into thinking that Freddy is back. So like Jason's kill, Jason's killing people. So they think it's Freddy Krueger in the, the town that he sends them to. Uh, actually, you know what? I think in Freddy Krueger, in that movie, they do explain that Elm Street is supposed to be in like the upper Midwest or mid, or is it maybe it's closer to the East Coast? But yeah, it's supposed to be like closer to the border of Canada. It's not supposed to be in California. Yeah, um, I thought it was like oh, literally Ohio or Wisconsin. I think I think Ohio is correct. I think you're correct, but I'm not 100 percent certain. Um, that sounds familiar though. And then I think Crystal Lake is supposed to be like a whole state over, even though in that movie it seems like they get there within like an hour. <laughs> like they're driving, yeah. <laughs> just drive fast. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, often these movies are kind of completely isolated from one another and characters don't really overlap, but you know, they're still fun. They're, they're just meant to be, you know, fun vehicles for how, how gruesome can we make these kills and make, how creative can we make these kills? It's like the entire plots are sort of based around interesting kills, I guess. That's Um, true. I thought, uh, so we have about about coming out. Sweet. I'm going to watch it. We have about uh, seven minutes left here. Before we get to our uh, final thoughts, I wanted to say that we never really talked about this on this show, and I'd like to introduce it to this particular episode, but the sound design, particularly the, like, score or, like, the horror element of the... the, It's not really music. It's more like an ambience. Yeah. There's a couple very specific... There's one that kind of sounds like like psycho but there's one that kind of just sounds like uh like almost like a i don't know i want to say a chant it's not really a chant but it's it's almost freddy's theme theme yeah and it really it really stuck it really stuck with me and i really enjoyed um i really enjoyed how the the music and sound design when i say music it's it's the best way i can put it it really enhances a lot of what's going on, especially when Freddy's being a, a dork, like when yeah. he's being all like, like trying to be funny because it's still like Wes Craven knew that like you could have Fred, Freddy being cracking wise. is almost scarier than him just coming in and be like, I'm going to kill you, bitch. Yeah. Also, he doesn't say bitch once in this whole fucking movie. That, that comes with the, as the no, franchise Nancy's goes, he says it friends. more and more and more as it goes. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Yeah. That's to a, the point that you're like, is this his catchphrase now? <laughs> like he just calls it's like, people a bitch? Yeah, it's a Rick and Morty reference because the, there's an episode where there's an alien that's basically just Freddy Krueger and he just says bitch every two seconds and it's fucking, it's hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, we have, bitch. Uh, <laughs> you can run, we have a bitch. bitch. And then he goes to see his family and he's like, oh, bitch. <laughs> Thanks for dinner, bitch. <laughs> um... Yeah, so we have about five, five to seven minutes left here. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start us off this week, uh, and just give my final thought. I'm actually gonna rate this movie pretty high. Uh, I'm gonna give it a four point two, which is, I think, high for a slasher flick. But I think that there's so much, like you don't see a, a horror movie that does so much world building, but also keeps such a baseline like origin feeling, you know, like a first, first one of the series. It almost, it reminded me a lot of Hellraiser. Hellraiser is its own completely different thing. It's like a, it, Hellraiser is like a Slayer song come to life. Yeah. Um, but this, this, they built, there's a lot of lore. There's a lot of world building. You get a really good feel for who the Freddy Krueger character is and what his motives are but also the insanity of being able to just be in dreams. And they really nail what a dream looks like. Or if you, when you try to explain a dream to somebody and, and let alone make it into a film or a sequence in a film, like they really, like Wes Craven really nailed that. I, I saw a little bit of trivia here. I won't get into it too deeply, but he came up with the basic idea um, over a three year period from a, uh, from a group of Southeast Asian refugees from Hmong, uh, and they all died in the throes of horrific nightmares. So he got this idea from, like, you know, folklore anyway, which is also, yeah, news based on folklore. Like, that's also, 
like re- re- like really cool to me and i'm i think i'm excited to go watch chucky movies for what they are but this i might become an actual like hardcore fan of the nightmare on elm street series i would and I'm be glad interesting that... to i would be interested to see what you think about new nightmare because it is i think my favorite one and it goes it, it directly ties into like folklore and he like utilizes that as a storytelling element i think that he had a lot more control over the story in that one like to the point that at the end of the movie rather than it just being like the nightmares of these kids that he's twisting there's like babylonian architecture and like pillars and like giant faces of like his face made of stone it's really cool that's what i'm saying like that 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 speaks to me so yeah 4.2 i really enjoyed this movie and i I rated it a lot higher than i thought i would i i had it sitting at a three while i was watching the movie because i was just like i don't know man but when you get to the end even with the weird twist at the end i really was like that weird twist makes perfect fucking sense for how we talk about the end just before we 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 do our final bits so uh steve you made i so when i first saw it it made me think the whole movie was like a dream or something. But yeah. you made an interesting point where it's it it's picking up from just that last the the end of the movie or whatever when she's about to fight him and shit. But she hasn't woke actually woken up from it. Yeah, where her plan to bring him into the real world, he's actually just convinced her that he she has brought him in, but mm-hmm. really she hasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's it's that weird ending that like makes it super ambiguous where it's like there's no clear point where she wakes up and it, it implies that she's still asleep at the end because <laughs> it and it's, like... yeah, it feels still dreamlike when her and her mom come out the door like you were saying yes. about those those like visual cues or whatever earlier right like yeah. it kind of had that it didn't have the same sort of uh um yeah it, it, everything's a little bit washed out in terms of color yeah. everything's really bright and there's sort of this like soft focus on everybody yeah, and, and everything's way yeah. too happy. She's like, I quit drinking. I just don't feel like doing it anymore. And I was like, that's not, nobody's ever <laughs> yeah. said that before. Wait a minute. I thought you were an alcoholic. You know what that means, lady? Alcoholism. <laughs> um, yeah, so I said my, my piece about it. Uh, Kaylin, why don't you uh, present your final, your final thoughts? Um, I have been enjoying revisiting these classics. Um, Sometimes it's like it's better to experience something at a like a certain time in your life or whatever, like when you're ready to experience kind of thing. Um, part of me feels like I missed out a little bit from like having not seen it when I was younger, just where it would have been a little bit more, um, you know, super well, like more of a like a spectacle, so to speak, or more a little more frightening or whatever. Um, but I definitely have a lot of uh, 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 a lot more. What's the word I'm looking for? I want to say respect, but that doesn't feel like the right word. But it just it like appreciation, I guess, is maybe the word to use. Um, you know, watching it a little bit later in my life, and then also just like in the time that we're in versus when it was actually created, and you know, kind of getting that like time capsule kind of feel from it. Um, for movies, though, so I'm assuming, like, the, the total is five. Like, five is the highest, right? Um, I don't think I'm ever going to give anything a five. I don't think. Like, no. five has to be fucking amazing. And there's some... Uh, the highest I have, to put it in perspective for you, the highest I've got given a movie in the last two years is The Matrix 1, which is, has a 4.8. But the CGI of the, the robots was so fucking abysmal that I had, couldn't give it a five. So, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. 4.8, eh? I, uh, there, there's some movies that I really, really like for sure, but I feel like it's just, I don't think I can give anything a five because like, I feel like there could always be a little bit of improvement, but, uh, so for, and then also I think sometimes I feel like I should be, um, rating things by their genre as opposed to comparing them to everything, right? Like, for, for a horror genre, I would definitely rate this. And even that first Chucky, like, I was surprised how like much I enjoyed it, how entertained I was by it, and uh, and just the quality in it. Um, and so, like, for horror movies, like, I definitely would rate this really high. But for all movies, like, taking everything into consideration, um, 
I think I can get a, give it a solid. Let me give it a solid. Uh, I'm gonna give it a solid. I'm gonna give it a solid three. I'm gonna give it a solid three. Wow. You sound a little flimsy on that. Yeah, it seems like that. <laughs> Based on everything you just said, I thought you were gonna be like four point five. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I was I was leaning towards three point five. Okay, right. so it's three to a three point five. Okay, and also I just want to remind both of you, like I only I do it at five. If you guys want to feel more comfortable at a ten, if you want to just have some arbitrary nonsense like bags of popcorn, do I what give you it feel. Three bags of popcorn. I I, I give it three bags of popcorn. <laughs> I think like the <laughs> I think the content of the discussion is more important than the rating that we yeah. get at the end. I agree. Um, so I personally, I'm just like giving it a rating doesn't really mean anything to me, but I think the opinions of you guys is what is important, but I guess it is nice to have something to be like, ding, this is what I have at the end. Um, again, I, I watched this movie the fir for the first time when I was of the age of whom it was designed to entertain by the people who wrote it and directed it and produced it. Um, teenagers. These movies are made for teenagers. They're not made right. for intellectuals or adults <laughs> who are going to, uh, sit down for an enriching experience during their, you know, hour and twenty minutes. I'm pretty no, sure I, I can barely, short. I can, I can get everything out of these movies by barely watching them. You know what I mean? Like I can, <laughs> like, I can do yeah. other things and watch them out of the corner of my eye and not miss a single fucking thing. Yeah. You know, especially like in my case, I've seen this movie many times. Not the first time I've seen it, but it has been a very long time since I've watched this one because there are so many others in the series that I enjoy more. I, when it comes down to it, I rarely am going to be like, Ooh, let's watch the first nightmare on, on Elm street. When, you know, the plots of most of these movies are quite similar. Mm -hmm. um, so you can watch which ones you have in mind in terms of like, which ones has my favorite funny kills. Like there's ones where he like turns a bunch of kids into meatballs on a pizza and like eats them. And so like, it's fun. <laughs> um, this one I, I know, Jason, you're not familiar with the entire series. Um, I don't think it's the strongest one. I don't think it's the weakest one at all. But it, there is something to be said it's the about foundation. the fact that, that it is the first one. It is the foundation. You're correct. And it is the one that, you know, launched a franchise. And I'm pretty sure it's responsible heavily for New Line Cinema being... <sighs> uh, being able to compete with other production. They, no, like, they were in a grow. situation like Square Enix was when they put out Final Fantasy where it was, they had one shot to make yeah. another movie and the, this, they built their whole new line cinema survived yeah. the eighties because of this. Yeah. And so I new line cinema, I think is still around to this day in some form. Um, and so it's hard for me to, you know, I, I obviously recommend it to people if they haven't seen it and they don't, they're not familiar. And I, I do think that if you're going to start watching the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, it is important that you do watch this one first yeah. to understand. So, like, I didn't watch this one first. I watched Freddy vs. Jason first in theaters. And then I was like, I like this Freddy guy. I was always yeah. kind of scared of him. But now he's like, he's funny? Okay. Uh, and so I went back and I watched all of them. Um, some of them are, are really weird. Some of them are... are a little bit scarier than others, but uh, this one, this one has everything you want from Freddy, but, but you, you, you having, being familiar with the other movies, it, I want more, you know, like it has all the stuff that I like about Freddy, but I know there's so much more to Freddy than what you get out of this movie that while I'm watching it, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I want, I want more of the, the goofs and the attitude that he has. Uh, and I know I've already said that my favorite Freddy is the Freddy from new, uh, new nightmare and that, ironically enough that's the one where he's almost even less funny than he is in this one because Wes Craven was like I don't want him to be a goofy cartoon character I want him to be like a serious scary bad guy um, so he redesigned him made him look a little bit more uh, horrifying the glove is redesigned to look more like the poster for this movie where it's like the bones and stuff are in it mm -hmm. um, and it looks like it's fused to his hand also the concept for that movie is Bananas, it's very similar to um, the third Scream movie where they're like making a movie about yeah. Scream while Scream is also happening in the movie at the same time, which is also a Wes Craven thing. And I think he plays himself in that movie again as well. Um, yeah. I, I think he just likes the idea of like things bending into reality. Meta. Yeah, he likes a little bit of meta storytelling. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that um, not to... B 
be re- reductive to what you had said, Jason. I, I don't think that Freddy's motivations are completely clear in this movie. Uh, and it's almost a little bit confusing because, like you said, you weren't certain at the end. Is Was his goal to kill the mom or to kill all the kids? Because he kills all the kids except for maybe one, but maybe he did at the end. And why he wants to kill these kids? Oh, to get revenge on the parents for killing him? Or does he want to kill the parents for killing him? I'm not 100% but certain. But he likes to kill movie. kids, so it's like, what? Yeah. Is he just indiscriminately <laughs> killing? He He's just, just, just happens murderer, that yeah. one of the murders is somebody that orchestrated his original death. It's convenient because exactly. he was already in the house. Right. But so, what if she gets su- what if she gets sucked down into like you know, like a hell right? or is something? She going, is she yeah. going to dream hell? Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know if they knew. Maybe um, they were still in a dream and that was Nancy's repressed thoughts about her own mother. Okay. Oh, I didn't know this movie was smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> um it might be like Chucky where there's a lot of DNA left over from ideas that they had while they were making the movie. Because a lot of the first in a franchise, they fly out of the seat of their pants while they're making the film. They, there's rewrites and there's all kinds of stuff going on, as we've seen probably. In, we have did, we, we could have looked up trivia about this, I'm sure. But, you know, you, you get to the, the third movie and the, the motive is very clear. The, what the catch phrases are very clear and what the like the the dialogue in this movie is all over the place it goes from being like really weird 80s bizarre like nobody talks like that to just like straight up like now i'm gonna give you fucking five minutes of exposition yeah, yeah. very clear this is what this is why this is happening exposition so i don't right. know <sighs> anyway um yeah i mean what i'm getting at is that i i i think that you know you do get who Freddy is from the story the mom says and from his actions as a character, but it doesn't, it doesn't go much more, much further than uh, he just wants to kill them because he isn't done killing people yet. Like I, I'm dead. Yes, but I'm still going to kill people. Um, and like you said, it, it jumps right into it at the beginning of the movie out of like, where within the, the first frames of the movie, we're already in someone's nightmare who's being hunted by Freddy and it just doesn't stop going until the end. There's no sort of ramp up to being like, this is how he came back. And, or like, you know, somebody finds a newspaper clipping of like Frederick like Krueger. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, it's I'm rare that you see I'm the monster. Bad, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. This is just my final thought, my opinion on the movie. Um, and, I, and to justify the rating I'm going to give it. Um, so, you know, unlike Chucky where I, I think I gave it a four or something, maybe higher. Um, I'm going to go lower with this um, specifically because I, I do know that there are much better nightmare on Elm street movies within the series. And if I was ever to do a list, this one wouldn't be at the top. Wouldn't be near the bottom either, but it, it's, it's not as good as some of the other ones. And I, I think that the development of Freddie as a character only gets better as the movies go on. The quality of the movies doesn't necessarily get better. But <laughs> the character becomes more favorable to the audience you you get excited when you see freddy rather than being like "Ooh, what gross thing is he gonna do now you're like oh i want to see what kind of fucked up (laughs) shit this guy's gonna get up to in the next scene yeah Um, so i'm gonna give it a three and a half 3.5 i'll give it a 3.8 actually a little bit higher it's not it's not quite mid-tier it's a little bit higher but uh yeah i like this movie a lot um but again it's not my favorite nightmare on on the home street well, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it again. Uh, these, I feel like these episodes come out faster and faster, and they do because of the way the scheduling has worked out. But we'll be back next Monday uh, with a very interesting um, movie, Friday the 13th, on our grimoire of our, – sorry, our, our Halloween grimoire of Familiar Killers series. You got it. You did it. For October 2021, we've got a lot of cool things coming down the pike. Um, and all I have to do is ask, hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Oh, you forgot to say bitch. <laughs> bitch. Hey, did you see this one, bitch? <laughs> yeah, I saw this one. I saw it. I saw it. And, you know, for Steve and Kalen, I'm Jason. For Jason and Steve, I'm Kellen. For Jason and Kaylin, I'm Steven.
I love you guys. Uh, I'm going to make you do that every single time. But have a good one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, bitch. Ha, ha, ha.